In this video, I will show you the process of how I created this reptile vivarium. To begin, I created a large frame using large wooden beams as the foundation for the vivarium. With the frame complete, it was time to add plywood panels to enclose the structure. Installing wheels for ease of movement and to lift the enclosure from the floor was needed for such a large vivarium. Wood putty was used to hide all of the screws and imperfections in the plywood. With the basic construction completed, it's time to seal the wood. For the outside, I used a polyurethane sealer which also contains a mahogany stain. These are going to be nest and hide boxes, which will have access from the outside of the vivarium. Thank you. 
clear polyurethane with added water resistance was used for sealing the inside of the enclosure and the boxes. There will be more measures taken to seal and protect the wood as we progress. Multiple ventilation options that can be opened or closed are important for a vivarium, especially where a higher humidity level is required. Because humidity will be raised in this vivarium by use of a mister and a humidifier, a drainage system is required. And now it's time to create the canvas for the rock wall background. This wall will also attempt to conceal the hide and nest boxes within it, whilst being accessible from outside of the enclosure. I used extruded polystyrene foam, otherwise known as XPS foam, as my medium to carve from. This foam is more dense and does not break into small balls like regular styrofoam does. Expanding foam was used to adhere the pieces to the vivarium. I also foamed the floor for further protection from water and so that I could direct water to the drain better. The foam itself will also be sealed later using a masonry waterproofer. PVC pipe was used to create entrances into the hide and nest boxes. To begin carving, I first start by removing some edges, corners and roughing up the surfaces. This helped me to visualise better where to cut and what areas required more foam. I used a variety of knives and tools to hack out larger sections of foam and for finer details. Always remember to be careful when working with sharp tools. Oof. When areas were completed, I added more expanding foam to the gaps that opened up after carving. Once dried, I removed the excess foam. To seal the foam and create the rock wall texture, I used latex based with dry lock masonry waterproofer. It was also used to seal the foam floor in the bottom of the vivarium. 
The dry lock is great for preserving the carving done in the foam. With many layers, it becomes hard and creates a rocky texture. The first coats were done in white. I then used powdered pigment to dye the dry lock to my desired colors. In hindsight, I would have just added pigment for all of the coats. At minimum, I recommend 5 layers of dry lock with the first layer soaking in and using the most product. Not everything goes to plan or as you envision it and this project was no exception. I decided that the lower right nest box was unnecessary and that my attempted tree trunk just did not work out as I had hoped. I wanted to show that it's okay to make mistakes, you can learn from them and come out the other side with a better skill set going forward. Once the new carving was completed and sealed with dry lock, it was time for the life support systems to be installed. Adjustable lamp holders are highly recommended. To maintain a higher humidity, a misting system was installed. I also converted a humidifier to be used as a vivarium fogger. For the nest and hides, I have used plastic storage boxes with holes cut into them so the PVC pipe entrances can slide into them. This way, the animals and substrate in the boxes are contained when opening the outer doors. For the vivarium floor, a drainage layer is created with clay balls and garden drainage fabric. Topsoil, compressed coconut fibre and sand are then mixed to create the substrate. Finally, adding some custom made jungle vines and live plants completes the build.
This was a challenging project but to see the end result and have my animals in their new home enjoying and using all the space makes it all worth it. I wanted to create something unique and visually stimulating for the animals and myself as their caretaker and I think I have achieved that here. And I am happy that I could make this video to share it with all of you. So thank you and I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please consider subscribing. I've got big plans for the channel and I'm just getting started.